screen? Yeah. 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 Enable this. Yeah. Yes, okay. we can enable. Thank you. So let's start this webinar on weapon shift. Okay. Let me introduce myself. My name is Mitali from Complete Open Source Solution. I am the Red Hat Certified Architect Level 2 and I have more than 8 years experience in Linux and open source technology. As my favorite distribution is Red Hat Enterprise Linux, I did my certification on version 6, Enterprise Linux version 6 on the year of 2014 and 2021 I upgrade myself on the Enterprise Linux 8 as it uh, consists of the container part, uh, new modules and automation tool set. Including this, I completed my certification in automation configuration management tool. One is Ansible, other one is Puppet. I also be part of that training and delivery. I was exposed to the Red Hat OpenStack cloud and certified on the version 10. Uh, but I'm not a part of that uh, cloud training delivery as you can see here CL210 and not only 210 that next label of uh, CL310 of Red Hat OpenShift uh, cloud certification also I did but I'm not taking as of now any cloud training and yes I also exposed to AWS uh, as well but not certified yet. Next, uh, uh, not last but not the least, I can say here, I'm delivering the training on the OpenShift container platform uh, since uh, 2017. I exposed to the OpenShift container platform 3.5. Then I completed my certification on the 3.9 on uh, 2019. Uh, I upgrade myself in the OpenShift version 4.2 version, 4.5 version and enrolled as a trainer in this platform. So that's uh, all about me and my certification. So what I did and I am conducting this training program, uh, Linux training, automation training, Docker, Kubernetes training. As I did my certification means uh, I can say here, I just uh, uh, in not the Red Hat certification part of Red Hat certification, as we all know, the CKA certification program on version 1.21, the latest version I completed on month of February the Kubernetes to deliver that training as well. Uh, next, I am planning for CKAD and uh, it's a new thing. Uh, the new uh, uh, Helm chat and a uh, lot of new things are introduced on the CKAD program. From 28 onwards, uh, they're, uh, they're planning to change CCNF. Uh, they want to plan to change the CKAD developers, Kubernetes developer certification program. So I'm just waiting once the pattern is changed. I have to appear on that uh, certification as well and being a part of that training and delivery. That's uh, all about me. So let's start the session. So I just represent my slide here. Hope you can see the open shift slide. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So now, uh, Red Hat OpenShift container platform is a set of modular components and services built on top of Red Hat core operating system and Kubernetes. So Red Hat OpenShift container platform adds platform as a service capability such as remote management, increased as a security, monitoring and auditing, application lifecycle management and self-service interface for the developers. That's why I mentioned in the first slide, it is a better way to develop and deploy the containerized application. Next, our course objectives and the structure we have to discuss in this webinar what is OpenShift, why OpenShift, the declarative architecture. We have to discuss what are the architecture and what are the components of OpenShift in the upcoming part. Okay, uh, I can say uh, hardly one over 30 minutes. Uh, I just schedule this program. Then I we have to compare the imperative versus the declarative commands and what are the resources of OpenShift and the driving factors. So before switching this course objectives, what is OpenShift? As I mentioned, it is a better way to develop and deploy the containerized application. First, I'm going to say what exactly the containerized application, what are the challenges we are facing in the uh, 
devops architecture or we can say in the docker management of the containerized application so that or uh, the comparatively difference between the traditional deployment of an application then the virtualization and containers once we know what exactly the container is next i have to move towards my course objective what is open shift okay so for this course uh, the prerequisite for this course is either you can attend the red hat certified system administrator rhcsa uh, if you certified that's quite good enough or if certification is not mandatory if you have the equivalent knowledge we all are system administrators are here this is the first prerequisite for this course after you are a RHCSA. If any version, either six or seven or eight version, you certified. Next prerequisite is either complete the Red Hat OpenShift one. That is, we have to know the basics of the containers and Kubernetes. And the course is DO 180. And this course also a certification related program. And if you not done any certification also, no problem at all, but minimal knowledge. What exactly the container is? How I can manage the containers? What is the container registry? What is the container image? How we can build the image? So this minimal, how I can write a Docker file to create the image? So this is the, these two are the prerequisites before we are moving towards our course that is DO 280. That is nothing but the Red Hat OpenShift 2 program. So these are the two prerequisites for this course. So let's start. So first we have to understand what is container. Okay, because five, 10 years back, we deploy our application onto the physical host. Instead of this definition, let me show you this slide first. So in the left hand uh, left hand of the slide i just comparing the traditional processes and share libraries and the entire operating system in the right side i am just mentioning the virtualization and in the mid i am keeping the containers okay so generally 5 10 years back we deploy the application on the physical host then we are moving towards the virtualization on top of the vm we are deploying the app then what is container some some people say that a docker container but it's it's a different terminology or we are having the mindset container means docker so we can i can say here so using docker we can start stop and create a container we can log out a container it's simply a tool to pull the images basically publish the images images means from the uh, images means is a registry server okay now we understand the container in various perspective okay so what exactly the container is because why why we have to discuss about the container so containers split you can see in the picture here containers split the traditional packaging of an operating system into a kernel layer and a user layer so you can see here one kernel layer is here and one user layer is here the os kernel layer runs on the host okay and include the operating system kernel and operating system services so what is this host operating system means the host operating system means either it is your physical machine or it is virtual machine or any public and private cloud based instance okay so containers split the traditional packaging of operating system into a kernel layer and a user layer the operating system kernel layer run on the host and it includes the operating system kernel and operating system ser services such as your network file system and your time synchronization client the os user layer include the os library such as you can say glibc and the tools such as the bash cell this is nothing but you can say the os user layer okay are a container runs a minimal user layer okay you can run how i can define how what exactly the container so let me show you a good picture that easily we can understand 
so this is the picture i am comparing traditional operating system and containers so containers i can define in three perspective first as we all are using the operating system i am going to define as a operating system perspective what container is then i am going to define the container as a system administrator perspective next i am going to define the container as a developer perspective so as a operating system perspective so if anyone can answer what exactly you think what is container uh, i want to hear from the audience as well uh, please what what exactly uh, the word container is if you think uh, it's just container like you can imagine a picture like this it's an enclosed box you can say so what the definition if you are uh, want to define this terminology container before we are moving towards the open shift uh, what you can answer yes please anyone it is a, it is an independent process uh, you can say exactly exactly okay uh, anyone else it's a independent process yeah the piece of code like you know independently we can work exactly okay so as a operating system perspective you can define container is just a process okay container is just a process which is running inside the sandbox and container processes are isolated completely isolated from the host operating system host operating system terminology refer to the physical machine it refer to the virtual machine or you can say private cloud or public cloud based instance so container basically deploy anywhere okay so container is a feature container is a technology provided by the linux kernel it is a process okay so how this processes are isolated from the host operating system with the kernel feature that is nothing but called the namespace we have to discuss more in the do 180 program what is exactly namespace how the container processes are isolated from the host operating system with the help of namespace for example your process id Uh, your container process group id file system inter process communication ipcs or you can say network id okay next is what how i can manage the container resources so next kernel feature is nothing but called the c group control group control group manages the containerized application resources for example consume the memory cpu storage uh, to manage the system resources we are using a c group next is what how the containerized application getting the security with the help of our generally in the system administrator we are using the ac linux to give the internal security to our files and folders process or ports similarly for a containerized application also we are using the mandatory access control ac linux or in the container security we have to discuss ac com okay so what is the capabilities to manage the containerized application how we can make our application secure so this way ac linux and sec com give the security to your containerized application so we can understand here as a operating system perspective container is just an process okay next definition we can define as a system admin perspective so container is just an application okay application can be java perl node js any 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 database related application like uh, you can say mysql postgres sql uh, which is portable in different environment so application can be deployed on the physical virtual environment cloud environment any environment you can deploy your containerized application so here i can say portability is the beauty of container we can build and ship the container anywhere anytime why because as compared to your virtualization environment the containerized application required very low footprint hardware 
it consume very less resources cpu memory virtual memory like this that's why we can say as a system administrator perspective containers are nothing but an application next definition as a developer perspective how i can define what a container is so as a developer perspective our question is here how we are packaging the application how we are building the application means how we are defining the code the code dependency how you are building the image image is nothing but it's having its universal format the custom image the application image or uh, how we can use the docker file inside that how we can define the dependency so all these things you have to explore more in after your system administrator course you have to go with the fundamental of containers then you have to expose to the red hat design a tool not with the docker red hat launched its product called podman with the help of podman how i can manage the containerized application so this all details regarding the basics of containers and kubernetes we have to cover in the open shift administrator one course that is called the do 180 so in the developer perspective we can say how we are packaging the application how we are building the application how we are defining the code code dependency building the image how we are using the docker file inside that how we are mentioning the os and all its dependency all the application packaging in a format what is the connection details so all these things we can say what container is okay next i have to move here so if i can use the containerized application what the challenge i have to face so that we can move towards the open shift or kubernetes any answer suppose docker can create a containerized application and in my first slide if you can see here i just mention open shift is nothing but for better way to develop and deploy the containerized application so i am just mentioning docker can create a containerized application or docker can orchestrate a containerized container all right but docker is inherently not capable of orchestrating a containerized application if you run the tomcat and a tomcat on a database server also working together in a cluster inherently docker by itself was not capable that latter it come with a solution of docker compose which again not a professional solution as such means once the container die once your container die we expect that automatically a new container will come up because that is the necessity of a enterprise class application and the docker has not capable of auto healing multiple replicas cannot do auto scaling with the help of the docker so solution is what solution is kubernetes and open shift itself a kubernetes distribution as such so we are facing the challenges what are the challenges how to scale our application how to avoid the port conflicts how to manage them on multiple host what happen if the host is having some trouble how to keep my application running how to update them with the latest patch how to rebuild the container image so this all solution come with what kubernetes and open shift clear so if you have any query up to this you can put in the chat window i will get back to you okay next so this is the training program schedule this is a four days of training instead of three days if we are conducting the training from classroom it is for three days if we are conducting the training from bt that is online training it is a four days of training program so what is the course curriculum here we have to start our discussion with the describing red hat open shift container platform what is open shift 
then we have to discuss about the verifying the cluster we have to check what are the operating system resources all the nodes are working fine or not we have to check health check of your cluster all are ready state or not how we have to troubleshoot if my application is having some error that we have to discuss with the verifying cluster in the day one schedule next we have to discuss in our training program authentication so i have to brief uh, a difference between what is authentication and authorization because uh, we all administrator know before deploying any application in the platform we must have a authentication token we are either using the ldap authentication or ht password or keystone authentication method so we are a valid client once we are a auth authentication client what we are authorized to do in that open shift container platform how we have to what is the role we have what we are authorized to do can i manage all the cluster resources or i have to can i take the admin privilege or i have to edit something that we have to cover in the day one schedule day two schedule we have to do more on the controlling access to the open shift resources okay so how we have to have a control how we have to create the secret how we have to create the sensitive keep the sensitive data and informations from the others then we have to discuss the service account token in the day two program then we have to brief about the networking what's the problem in the docker networking and what is software defined networking that open shift and kubernetes is using that we have to cover what is software defined networking what is how the if in my production environment lot of containerized applications are running how i have to balance the load with the service resource what are the load balancer type how to create a secure route before exposing my application outside the cluster so this all brief we have to cover in the how i have to write the network policy to restrict the access for a particular application containerized application running inside the pod so how we have to write the network policy and rule so all this networking stops we have to cover in the day two module day three as it is a four day i am just in the third day i am discussing the pod scheduling how we where i have to run my application if five nodes are there my application run in which node according to my capacity size application size application capabilities with the uh, all the things all the criteria affinity anti affinity how i have to schedule my pod so uh, how the algorithm will work what is node selector that all thing we have to cover in the day 3 next we have to scale up that is the big disadvantage of the challenge i can mentioned okay in the docker we can facing so scaling how auto scale our application auto scale means scale up and scale down our application on demand okay so as per the cpu utilization my application scale up automatically manually if any application get deleted i don't bother i want that my cluster is running in a high availability mode five applications are running if any application died then the feature of auto healing with the help of orchestration tool open shift is using kubernetes kubernetes is the orchestration tool that will scale up and scale down my application manually and automatically in the cluster how is it possible we have to do with the practical example in our course curriculum next we have to discuss with the performing cluster update how we have to do the updates from one version to other version this is completely theory without any practical what is the over the ota method newly launched over the air method how we have to upgrade or update our open shift cluster with the latest version and finally we discuss about the managing cluster with the web console everything i have to do with the command line or you are demonstrating with the dashboard yes we have to discuss whatever the things user management cluster management authentication resource management we have to do with the once we understand we have to discuss about the operators and all the things we have to do with the web console so this is the four days of 
ट्रेनिंग शेड्यूल सैटरडे संडे सैटरडे संडे ओके टू वीकेंड्स इट विल कवर द डीओ टू एटी ओपन शिफ्ट एडमिनिस्ट्रेटर टू प्रोग्राम लेट स्टार्ट विथ वॉट इज ओपन शिफ्ट ओके सो नाउ होप यू ऑल कैन सी माई स्लाइड ओके लेट मी चेक इफ एनी क्वेरी यू हैव Uh, yeah. Before we go on to the next uh, next slide, yes, I have yes, a please. question. So yeah, please, um, please. we have so many orchestrator and tool, right? So like uh, Kubernetes, yes. Mesa, Marathon, and uh, OpenShift, Docker, exactly. Spam. So yes. uh, why we specifically go for uh, Red Hat? So because yes. Kubernetes is open source. So many uh, uh, many organizations preferring uh, Kubernetes. Yes, I, so I'm just telling. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now. Uh, thanks for raising the question here. It's a very good question. What is the difference between OpenShift and Kubernetes? Because uh, the challenges what I am mentioning, monitoring your entire cluster, if any node goes down, how I come up with the auto healing, if any container die, who is going to bring up my application? Uh, uh, suppose one huge case I am saying, if two different virtual machines run, multiple containers are running. is it possible to communicate so these things comes with the solution like kubernetes you are mentioning another one docker swarm you are mentioning apache mesos so container management or orchestration tool automates the deploying scaling and managing the containerized application on group of servers so why i have to why why i have to go for open shift why not kubernetes what the uh, because kubernetes powers the deployment and management these docker images or whatever the images across the large cluster by providing the self healing at auto healing feature so self healing and auto scaling features is nothing but the orchestration tool kubernetes so what why i have to go for open shift so open shift builds on the technology by providing a layer of tool that abstract the underlying kubernetes and infrastructure management task they help the developer easily deploy and manage the application on a kubernetes based infrastructure means open shift add support for the developer tools for example acm source control management so let me check that picture if i have so i get a clarity yes let me maximize this one okay scm okay so open shift add support for the developer tool such as source control management it is built in integration with the scm software like github okay next team next advantage is what open shift has built in integration with the pipeline that helps the developer rapidly and consistently develop build test and deployment of the application third is what open shift helps manage the container runtime images by providing a built in registry fourth point open shift support for the software defined networking that provide the network capabilities out of the box fifth point open shift is api centric means it has a rich well documented set of api that helps us easily integrate open shift with our existing infrastructure last but not the least open shift provide out of the box support for the project teams in kubernetes we are doing the namespace but the isolation out of the box support for the project team and users to organize and manage access to the application okay this is given by the open shift please go mute uh, all of you please go mute if you have any queries put your uh, quiz in the chat window so i can get back to you okay so we will look all these things like scm ci cd pipelines helps to manage the container runtime images uh, go beyond with the out of support for the software defined networking next api centric 
or it can provide the support for the project for the teams and users to organize and manage the access to the application with the security context constraint with the service account role based access control okay so we will look each of these in depth later in our course discussion that's why this is kubernetes yes it is a orchestration tool it power the deployment and management okay it it just uh, give the cluster providing itself the self healing and auto scaling feature under the hood of open shift we are using the orchestration tool kubernetes okay with this add on support for the developer tools clear okay yeah yeah okay hope i can answer your query let me move to the next slide here this is i am just mentioning not the uh, declarative architecture i can say i just mentioning the implementive architecture of red hat open shift 4 if i can compare here don't be highlighted this one so that it is easy for me instead of maximizing the older architecture if i show you so that i can compare nicely the three version and four version so just one second i have to check uh, my do 20 three version so introduction description architecture exactly okay so this is the red hat open shift architecture implementative architecture of your three version and this is the version we are taking our training program on version 4 so what is the difference so first we can see here we can install the red hat open shift on top of red hat core os that is nothing but containerized optimized operating system but earlier days up to 3.11 version 3 series last version where we have to install our open shift in the enterprise linux red hat enterprise linux 7 we are just installing the open shift using some ansible playbook we are installing our open shift but now it is what red hat core os second difference you can see here we are getting the container images we are using the container api and packaging format that is docker but in the version 4 we are using what cryo container runtime interface with open container initiative oci tool so first we all have to know what is red hat core os and what what is red hat core os what is cryo why i cannot install my red hat on top in my red hat open shift on top of the uh, enterprise linux now never you install your master or open shift on the red hat enterprise linux worker node yes you can make it i will tell the architecture what is master and worker node but for the time being the first difference between the open shift 3 and open shift 4 is what it is using the core os up to 3 version we are using what the red hat enterprise linux so next question in your mind what is red hat core os anyone know yeah, you can share your thought what is core operating system it's uh, another yes, operating please. system like the linux so. uh, not it's like perfect. linux it's a container linux if you can say okay core operating system is nothing but a container linux okay container linux redefine the operating system as a smaller more compact linux distribution so traditional distribution if any unused package is there so package unused software that lead to the dependency conflict it will needlessly increase the attack surface but core operating system run on most of the cloud providers virtualization platform bare metal server core operating system also support container runtime all of the popular method of running the container you can choose to interact with the container at low level to the user high level orchestration from your work for example docker earlier only we are using docker now 
on top of that i am writing cryo means uh, the core operating sub subsystem support for the docker rocket drawbridge alexi podman any of the open container initiative okay so that's why the container linux provide only the minimal functionality required for deploying the application inside the software containers together within a built in mechanism for the service discovery and configuration sharing so everything inside a straight jacket it is an immutable operating system okay so we will discuss in brief what exactly what are the static ports running inside the core operating system so for the time being you can understand the open shift master only install on the core operating system it is a straight jacket once it is installed you cannot write anything inside it in the sense you cannot edit any configuration setting on this container core os if you want to do any configure configure inside the container because it is a container linux okay it's a container linux next is what cryo what is this cryo earlier picture if you can see in the open shift we are seeing here docker we are see this is the old picture of the three version it is mentioned docker so docker is used we are using the docker tool to manage to uh, container api and image packaging format we are using the only tool is docker but open shift 4 onwards we cannot use docker yes we can but it support with what cryo what is this cryo container runtime interface means yes please what what, what exactly this cryo is so let me explain you a container engine provide a set of tools for tasks such as creating container image starting a container the part of the container engine that effectively start and monitor the container is the container runtime so a container runtime leverages a number of linux kernel feature to start a container okay so the uh, the main feature is namespace namespace create the sandbox and isolate the process from other processes another feature is c group and another feature you can say sc linux capability sc comp capability okay so that is nothing but a container runtime each okay in essence helper that start the process inside a set of control group and namespace under restricted sc linux context capabilities okay then what exactly this uh, orchestration and cryo what what exactly the word orchestration because on top of cryo I, it is mentioned here in the architecture what is mentioned here kubernetes is the container orchestration and management so what exactly the orchestration terminology container orchestration is another fundamental enabler of digital transformation initiative and kubernetes is the default standard container orchestrator most user organization and technology provides agree that running a containerized application in a production environment requires automation feature provided by a container orchestration so microservices application and cloud native application exhibit many of this issue commonly founded in the distributed application so traditional monolithic application were able to avoid many of this issue because the application services and function were running together same process space so when an application is broken into multiple container you need to consider reliability security management accepts of running multiple services connecting using a network so container orchestration brings a generic high level abstraction to describe and manage the distributed application so container orchestration also perform the task such as load balancing and failover that used to be performed by either custom code inside the application 
or by specialized middleware services so container orchestration manages a cluster of server as a shared pool that runs multiple containerized application so red hat container orchestration technology is open shift based on kubernetes okay so the red hat open shift product family include the product for a customer need such as red hat open shift container platform dedicated to open shift io so open shift adds to the kubernetes feature such as multi tenancy storage management application life cycle management is possible with what red hat open shift with because red hat open shift product family integrate with many component open container initiative okay not only i have to use the docker we have to use any container runtime interface any oci complaint suppose oci means docker podman rocket drawbridge lxc anything okay then the auto scaling feature the self healing feature the orchestrate feature under the hood we are using what kubernetes resources okay so next slide before i am discussing its cd crd okay what is container runtime definition containerized services first we all have to know what is the architecture okay now you can see the picture here in the open shift generally two types of nodes are there one is called the master node second one is called the worker node so a open shift cluster is made of master and node host master host forms all the control plane that store means of monitors reacts to the changes in the cluster set and the node host are also known as the compute node because they run the user containerized application your application run in the worker node but master node the name is what control node it host the kubernetes control plane components to manage the cluster and applications are running on the worker node that's why students can say that two types of node are there control node compute node someone say master node worker node clear so the in the open shift architecture there are two types of node are there one is called the master node one is called the worker node so next is what control plane components what it manage the manage uh, how it will manage the cluster what are the control plane component so in my slide i just mention here api server scheduler controller manager or control manager it cd so these are what control plane components where i deploy my application where my application is running my application is running on the worker node where your application is running my application cannot run in the master node yes it can run application can run if the master node is not scheduled with any tent that we have to discuss okay don't have a mindset that generally in master node we are not deploying the application but if anybody ask can i deploy the application can i run my application in the master node yes you can the answer is yes okay so we are restricting we are making that no 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 application you schedule on the master node only control plane components are running we are segregating the thing any application you can run any worker node 5000 nodes are there you can deploy your application but control plane just run the four component api server scheduler control manager and its cd let me give a small introduction of each four component control plane component on the master node so now these are my worker node this is the master node okay so master first is the api server in your open shift master that you can install only mandatory on the core operating system not in enterprise linux 8 version 4 onwards second point in the master master node other name is control plane node where we can run 
the four control plane components first component is api server so what is this api server user usually interact with the api server it is the only interface where it is api server okay so api server is what usual user usually interact with the api server it is the only interface where we developer and system administrator communicate with the master and once we make the communication to create a container let's say then the api server instantly create a desired state of configuration in the hcd so hcd is the database where all the configuration requirement are stored instantly once the resource definition what is required what the requirement is coming everything is stored then instantly the controller control manager okay so this picture yes then the control manager then the controller communicate the scheduler that which one is the best system to orchestrating my container to deploy my application so immediately the scheduler communicate with the kubelet running on the node that is worker node so api server you can say communicate with the kubelet you don't directly you cannot say suppose i have five worker node i want to deploy one apache application or i want to deploy one php application nginx application whatever the application we are requesting to the api server to run my container to create a container on the container platform ocp container platform so api services user interact with the api server api is the only interface where the user developer system administrator can communicate with the master once the communication takes place to create a container api server instantly create a desired state of configuration in the hcd hcd store the resource definition how many application you want to run nginx application i want to deploy how many five applications and i want to run so how many number of pods okay so all the resource definition service resource deployment resource stored in the hcd we have to discuss in our course each open shift resource in detail next the controller controller is what what is the control manager or controller will do controllers are available to take care of different area node controller take care of node if the node become unavailable or get destroyed or a pod is deleted the replication controller assure that the desired number of containers are running at all time so controller will take care of that part node controller take care of the node part replication controller check how many application five application okay one is down automatically self heal at any time five manually you just scale up automatically you scale up five applications are running so replication controller assure that desired number of containers are running at all time next component is what scheduler what scheduler will do Schedule, you cannot say suppose five nodes or six nodes are there my application is going to be run on the node 2 no you cannot schedule okay so who will decide the control plane who will control the control plane component scheduler so scheduler identify the container need to placed on which node based on its size suppose you want to uh, deploy one application of 5 gi but your node is having the capacity of 3 gi can your application run on that particular node no because your application requirement is 5 gi but node capacity is 3 gi how your application run so scheduler identify the container need to be placed on which node based on its size its capacity how many containers are already in the node certain conditions like uh, you can say it's identify the right node it identify it not place scheduler schedule scheduler not placing the pod in the node all people having the mindset okay scheduler will place my pod in that node no scheduler will decide it will identify 
the right node to place the container based on the container size capacity how many containers are already there any other policy constant node affinity rule performance etc so as for that scheduler will decide where to place the pod where you place the containerized application on the worker node in the worker node these are the four control plane component api server we can contact scheduler will decide or schedule or place the container on the node control manager take care of the various components node controller replication controllers to take care of how many number of replicas are running at all the time it will run the application replication controllers uh, check that all the application or all the containers are running at all the time it will assure that desired number of count are running okay so control manager is a demon that embeds the core control loops okay next is its cd its cd is nothing but a database that store the value in a key value format as its cd store the value in a key value format the default file format open shift using each json file format or yaml file format why all the resources all the resource definition stored in the its cd database in the key value format that's why we are choosing the default file for format in open shift each json or yaml okay instead of other file format next is what worker node worker node or you can say compute node that runs your containerized application okay in worker node our application is running and in the worker node what is what are the two components kubelet another one is kube proxy another one is cryo so what is kubelet anyone kubelet anyone exposed to kubernetes in this forum or Uh, kubernetes or you can say exactly it's kubele uh, in if you are exposed to the kubernetes fundamentals or introduction you must aware of what is the kubelet is anyone okay no issues no issues so kubelet is an agent that run on each node i am not specifying worker node i am not specifying master node i am using here each node okay kubelet is an agent that run on each node in the cluster it listen the instruction from the kube api server and deploy and destroy the container on the node when it is required so kube api server fetch the status report periodically from the kubelet to monitor the status of the node and the container on them so any one of the component control plane component scheduler control manager its cd they don't communicate directly with the worker node so all the communication routed through the api server api server has a security kubelet also don't directly communicate with the scheduler controller or its cd so api server all the communication from uh, or you can say all the communications are routed through the api server and api server has a security token mechanism that ensure that nobody else can communicate to the kubelet or the kubelet also not communicate with anyone in the kubernetes master once the api server communicate with the kubelet for a new container uh, is coming i want to deploy this new container request is coming by the system administrator what really happen instantly the kubelet as to the cryo which is the traditionally we are using the docker daemon now it's dropped right now by the red hat and kubernetes community also so cryo let's say i want to run a engine export so it connect to the repository or you can say docker repository or the private registry and download the image create the desired number of desired pod and finally your application up and run in the worker node or compute node 
if multiple worker nodes my applications are distributed can they communicate with each other how they will communicate with the help of cube proxy so these are the three component cubelet and cryo are nothing but your like uh, you can say uh, this cubelet and uh, cryo this is nothing but your unix or linux like daemon suppose you are administrator you are managing system ctl start httpd daemon sshd daemon cronyd daemon similarly this cubelet and cryo are nothing but the unix or linux like daemon running on each node even in the master node also if sometime you plan to deploy your application on master node cubelet must be there cryo must be there it just learning as a service daemon or unix your traditional unix or linux daemon like you are saying httpd you can control with the system ctl command system ctl status of kubelet it is running or not okay so it's an agent so api server is communicating with the kubelet when the request is come to deploy the application in the open shift container platform this is a just declarative architecture and some definition of the each of the component clear okay yeah so next i have to move uh, towards so how my application is running i have a image image i have to using that image i can create a container where my container is running that is nothing but the resource is called pod i am just telling pod 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 but what exactly that pod what is that terminology pod is we know node node means what a server that host the application in the open shift cluster master node is what a node server that manages the control plane worker node is what also named as the compute node that execute the workload for the cluster and application pods are scheduled on the worker node okay i understand what is node but what is this pod is yes what uh, is this pod? Uh, yeah, pod is like we can control the docker or containers exactly so can you say in a pod how many containers is running uh, only one one no this is it the could be multiple wrong here. multiple in a pod multiple containers are running okay we are thinking pod is the single unit maximum two okay but yes we can run multiple containers when we are running a containerized application multiple containers run in a single unit they can access the same networking same storage space that unit is called pod when i demonstrate each component what is deployment what is deployment configuration what is replica set what is pod that is nothing but the single unit that run multiple containers okay you don't think that uh, yes every time we, we can see one by one is ready one one container one in one pod one container is running but no you can run multiple pods in your sorry multiple containers in a pod next is what it's it is done services open shift now the come this this all terminology controller scheduler these all are the resources of node master these are nothing but the kubernetes okay and what is open shift terminology in open shift sometimes you students are answering in the open shift terminology three nodes are there one is master node one is worker node another one is what infra node so infra node is what a node server containing the infrastructure services like monitoring logging external routing okay uh, by default in the open shift 4 version up to open shift 3 to monitor we are using the we are to health check of your cluster we are configuring or installing the metric subsystem 
we are go and doing the hipster hocular matrix cassandra database in open shift 4 installation by default the monitoring tool we are using prometheus okay uh, next is infra node uh, what you are using for the external routing okay uh, so what you are using for the load balancer so these all things we can say in the infrastructure services a node server that containing the infrastructure services for example monitoring logging external routing Th second advantage is what console open shift a web user interface provided by the red hat open shift container platform cluster that allow the developer and administrator to interact with the cluster resources third is what third terminology in open shift that we are not using in the kubernetes project open shift extension of kubernetes namespace allow the definition of user access control here the user access control completely different okay for the resources with the help of project in open shift so this is the benefits we have to discuss in our four days of administrative to training program and what i discussed i just put small small notes in the slide what is master and how the request will come where we configure our storage server because we all know that container application storage is what ephemeral it's temporary how to uh, open shift provi provisioning dynamic storage using the kubernetes resource persistent volume persistent volume claim so that we have to cover dynamic provisioning no no i want to manually create and provide okay permanent storage to my application that also we have to discuss in our day one training program so this is the master node running four components applications are run on the worker node or you can say what compute node so master node only on the red hat core os worker node either core os or 7 point rhl 7.6 onwards after once the installation done you can add more worker node of enterprise linux if it is not red hat core os also no problem but master is only core operating system and these are the infra node your monitoring service your logging service or your external router okay so what you are using for external routing which secure route you are using pass through encryption you are using or edge encryption you are using so what is your wildcard dns how i expose my application outside the cluster how service balance the load inside the cluster so this is all comes under your in infra node so that's all and uh, what are the driving factors we have to discuss with this picture what are the advantage of open shift is what are the features or driving factors of the open shift so first is what self service platform developer can have the priority to deploy any kind of application using the template using the git suppose one source code is there in the git repository i have built in integration with the source control management i can from the source code i can build the image that is not possible in kubernetes s2i so open shift gives the self service platform developer can have the priority to deploy any kind of application using template git s2i etc multi language open shift support java node.js php perl ruby etc automation it automatically rebuild and redeploy containers when upstream source code and container image change what does it mean suppose i am using php 5.6 i am using the source code using the php 5.6 but my customer demanding the latest php 7.0 zero so automatically when the upstream source code change it automatically create a new builder image and for that we can redeploy our application that is called the automation provided by the s2i next is what collaboration it allow you to share the project and pods nodes 
migration multi tenant multiple project you can work and you have the control web scale that is nothing but you can say standards based and web scale you can say open shift provide the container multi tenancy and distributed application platform to handle increased traffic on demand so without downtime application up and running 24 into 7 upgradation is sequentially means directly you cannot jump now version is 4.8 okay so from 4.5 you cannot directly go to the 4.8 so upgradation or application uh, upgradation is done in a sequentially manner in the back end okay so we have to discuss some theory on chapter 7 regarding this uh, enterprise grade support and security it provide the multi layer security using the ac linux using the ac com some vulnerability check okay or you can say role based access control it integrate also with the external authentication system like ldap o authentication ht password to make it secure so these are the driving factors for open shift so we have to discuss on brief or in our training program so that's all about from my end and i am just uh, sharing this recorded session and uh, link to all of you these are the very good link you are getting some more idea before joining the session and those who are not exposed to uh, also i am not uh, uh, familiar as of now with any container technology i don't run so for that uh, directly if you join the do 280 course without the prerequisites of uh, 180 i am sharing a container class recording to all of you to understand what exactly the red hat tool podman there is not much difference between podman and docker okay so the only difference uh, i can mention here docker is running as a daemon okay but in podman there is no daemon is running so it's like straight forward your like your yum repository you can say uh, you can same command like you are docker login docker pull docker run we are just replacing the word with the podman and we are using some managing tool scopio that i have to share some 3 to 4 hours recorded session before the training program you join and i will take in the 4 days of training program first one to hour i just clarify what is open shift introduction to open shift if you are not aware of the do 180 module also no challenge you can face what is image stream what is label what is controller what is dc what is bc so i just give some idea with some practical example then we have to discuss our day wise schedule of our training program and you are getting your course material book once your registration done from the red hat not from cos okay because it is completely you are getting the blue jeans link to attend the training the book the lab everything you are getting from your end so it's all about so thanks all of you uh, if you have any query i just get back to you all what about the exam tata yes yes uh thank you so let